Introduction to Engineering Design. This is for 1.4.1 uh, Suite Improvement, where we're designing cupcakes for the company called Cupcake Party. And we're, oh, we're, I'm sorry, we're not designing cupcakes. We're designing cupcake boxes for Cupcake Party and trying to find the space where the best kind of box for them to fit uh, as many of them as you possibly can uh, in all of the different varieties that you possibly can. So they want the boxes to be able to fit uh, large, the jumbo cupcakes, uh, the standard cupcakes, and also the little mini pastries. So uh, first thing to do is when we're getting to the develop the solution, you should already have a, a general idea what you're going to make from your concept sketches. And now it's time to take those and turn them into 3D models. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of resources to help you out with how to develop the solution here and to create our 3D models. And you, and you really got two choices if you're dealing with Onshape. So if your instructor is dealing with uh, Fusion 360 or uh, Autodesk Inventor, then you're definitely going to want to have to ask them how, you, uh, how this would change from that situation. Uh, but in Onshape, everything that is education license is public uh, domain, so you can actually get these files that everybody's making. Uh, and I have some files that is called uh, Cupcakes for Testing that you can search on the public and grab if you want to. And I'll put a link for that at the bottom of the YouTube video as well, too. So you don't even have to go searching for it. You can just go grab it on the link, and that should load up everything for you. It gives you the um, Jumbo Muffin. It gives you the little mini tart, and it gives you the standard cupcake. So uh, what can you do? Like, And the reason why these files are important to us is you want to be able to tell and justify whether or not your design actually works out correctly or not. So there's a couple of different options that we can do. One is you can make your box inside of a Part Studio file uh, so that you can use the size of the cupcakes as a general reference for where you're wanting to put your container. So you're going to have to develop your box based on the dimensions that you want and then develop it like that. And then you could have these out to the side for reference. Now, if you wanted to take this and move it, uh, it's a little tricky in a part studio, but it's doable. You can use the button up here that says transform. It might be hidden because it might actually say wrap instead. There's a little arrow right here. You want to try to click on this arrow and make sure that you get to transform. And you can click on that button, and it says Entities to Transform or Copy. You can click on the uh, pastry or whatever you want to actually move, and you have several different options to be able to either rotate it or translate it. Uh, my favorite one to do if I'm just taking this and moving it around is to translate just by X, Y, and Z. So if you click on that, you should get like an X position to move, a Y position, and a Z position. It's a little uh, laggy, so you could take this and drag it over if you wanted to, or you could also just input the coordinates. Like, for example, if I wanted this to move over uh, five inches, I would hit five, and then I would hit tab to make sure that I didn't accidentally hit enter, and it would take the part, and it would try to move it inside the box. And I could just kind of uh, modify it a little bit and play with it left and right, up and down, see if it actually fits where I want it to fit. And you could use that as a kind of justification to see if your box would actually work. And that is one way to do this. Uh, it's not my preferred way to do it, though. Uh, my preferred way is, regardless of whether you made your box inside one part studio with the other ones or not, my preferred method is to create an assembly. So there should be a little tab at the bottom that says Assembly 1. Uh, I went ahead and I right-clicked and I renamed it to Box Assembly. Uh, I would highly recommend you guys do the same as well, too. Uh, but what you can do instead is you can, this little button up here that says Insert, you can click Insert, and it should give you all of the different parts. Now, here's the downside for having multiple parts in one part studio, is that uh, if you try to click on just this, it's going to give you like both of them mixed together at the same part. And that's not what you want, because then you won't, won't be able to move one and the other at the same time. What, uh, but there's a fix around that. You click the arrow down, uh, right next to it, and it should have each little individual part by itself. Instead of having to pull out the entire thing, it just pulls out one part. So what I would do uh, in this assembly is I would click on the parts that I want, and so I'm going to click on part, it says part two. It's the little box that I made that very clearly doesn't fit any cupcakes whatsoever, so please don't copy that. Um, and let's see, I can click on, let's say I want to test the jumbo muffin. I can click the jumbo muffin and move it out here and then click the green check mark. 
there's a couple of ways that you can constrain this object by getting it inside the box, although you may not even have to do that because it's pretty clear that this box is like way too short. You can click on it and then move it up, down, left, and right, and much easier than you can with the transform option inside of a part studio. So if I wanted to try to get this muffin like straight in, I can switch over to the top view and then move it over and then straight down. So you can see that there are issues. The buff muffin doesn't quite fit inside. This means that I need to make some adjustments in developing the solution so I can make adjustments to my box, uh, but I can check it right here and there without having to physically construct it. And this is what developing the solution is all gonna be about, is it's gonna be about taking this 3D design, developing the box, and then using these tools to try to make sure that it fits in there. You wanna try to get it just right, okay? There's a couple of other things that we can do as well too. Uh, so, like, if you move this out of the way, you can get this to uh, snap onto the box by using something called the planar mate. And if you click the planar mate, and you click on the bottom of the box, and then you click on the bottom of the muffin, then these two will snap into place with each other. And if I try to move it around, I can't move it up or down anymore without moving the entire box. So the box kind of stays stuck with it. And then I can take the muffin and I can move it to the left and right and up and down. And that gives me a little bit of wiggle room without having to uh, worry about the Z direction. So I don't have to worry about the muffin coming off of the top of it. I call it a muffin cupcake. You know, one of the two. It really kind of looks like a muffin. Um, so this is another way that you can use to, to help you in developing your box to make sure that it actually looks good. And then you can actually add, because let's say that you, you didn't want to just add one jumbo muffin. Let's say you actually wanted to see if it could hold two standard muffins. That's okay. You can just click it and then move both of the cupcakes out and click the green check mark. And then you can test those out as well, too. So this is a good way to test out all of the different ways to uh, make your box and develop your box. So I, I hope this was helpful, and y'all have a great day.